Excellent. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, continue with uh, what we have been talking about the cities and you know how God has a heart for the cities. We'll uh, first pray and then we'll get into uh, the discussion. Uh, I'd just like to request someone to lead us in a word of prayer. Anyone? Gracious Lord, we thank you for this time. We humble ourselves once again before your presence. The Lord, we pray, open our eyes of understanding so that we will know more of your word, more of your mysteries of your word, God. Help us, Nancy, to share your word with boldness and uh, speak to us tenderly, Lord. Help us to follow your word. Help us to live out of the revelation that we are receiving, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you for that. Uh, in the last class, actually, Nicholson had asked a question. I don't know if he's here. If he's not here, then... Mm. Yeah, he isn't here. So let me see. Maybe I'll post it on the stream. Uh, basically, he asked about, uh, you know, fasting um, uh, for when we pray for the city. So there are examples. There are, uh, you know, there's a time when Ezra called for a fast. Uh, and, you know, at that time, everyone was fasting, including the animals, like right? Because they were seeking God for direction on how to uh, move forward. So as a community, oh, yeah, here is, here is Nikki. Yes. So, uh, uh, Nicholson, welcome. Uh, I was just answering your question. Uh, you had asked if there is an involvement of fasting when we pray for the city. And um, so the answer is yes, there are examples. Uh, you had uh, people like Ezra calling for a fast when, uh, you know, they as a community, they needed direction and they needed God to really bless them uh, in the work ahead. Uh, so, you know, we see that. And uh, even in the life of um, Nehemiah, okay, Nehemiah, uh, he's concerned about Jerusalem and he's concerned about the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. But you notice that, you know, he is praying and he did not even, <laughs> sorry, he also engaged in fasting as he was seeking the Lord. So there is an element of uh, fasting which is involved in um, praying for the city. All right. So uh, I just wanted to add that. Just give me a moment. The chair that I sit on, it keeps going down. I have to pull it up. Sorry for this. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. So there is an element of fasting there. And uh, you asked if there is a transformation uh, that uh, anyone, has, any city has experienced, right? So you can look up. There are a lot of articles and videos about this place called Kali in Colombia. Okay, Kali in Colombia. And uh, <clears throat> based on the um, change that this this uh, city experience there are documentaries as well i think there is one documentary which is called as transfer transformations okay you could look it up uh, it's a, a nice video to watch and they talk about how there was a lot of um, rain in that city, uh, there were murders, uh, drug trafficking, um, you know, uh, uh, corruption, so things like that. Uh, so when such things were going on, the people decided, the Christians there decided that they are going to start praying for the uh, city. So they started praying and they also held one event, uh, a citywide event where they gathered people they basically invited people from all churches to come. So it's it's um, you can see it in the video. The you you can see how uh, you know so many people come together. They pray. They pray overnight. They worship. Uh, they they are just seeking the Lord. So the the report says something like when the people <laughs> started praying together, they started seeking God together as a citywide uh, body. Uh, changes started happening. 
in the city so the crime rate came down uh, and uh, you know testimonies like that and i think the video also carries city transformation um, testimonies from other places as well so just have a yeah okay sitkenu has given us that link thank you sitkenu so just have a look at that and um, that will help us see how it actually works you know today uh, so i i hope that is beneficial now let's go on to what we have been discussing we talked about god having a heart for the city uh, now we will proceed from there and see how we can pray for the city and bring about this transformation so yesterday uh we we saw that it's us you know god notices the sin of the city and uh, the agents who have to bring a change is us because we are salt and light okay and uh, we are the ones who um are called to pray for god's kingdom to come now the body of christ is is the one that shifts the balance now how do we shift the balance primarily through prayer primarily through uh, a spiritual warfare okay so when we talk about prayer and spiritual warfare mm, the bible paints a picture for us and that is to say that we as god's people are like watchmen what do watchmen do watchmen um, they guard a place they watch okay to make sure that only the right people enter and that the wrong people are kept out so the watchmen look out for the city they look out for the city now scriptures tell us now isaiah 62 6 and 7 says that we are watchmen now we are watchmen on the walls so as we pray for the city what's happening we are protecting the city we are guarding the city from the works of the evil one and we can also continue to proclaim and declare god's blessing upon the city so we are watchmen and our characteristic is to uh, protect our characteristic is to uh, be like a gatekeeper i already told you the ones who need to come in will come in but the ones who shouldn't come in you know we prevent them from entering so even through prayer right in the spiritual realm now we may not physically be stopping human beings from coming that's not what we are talking about but spiritually we can allow and disallow uh you know the the influences spiritual influences over our city so we have a great responsibility to take care of our city through prayer so we're guarding it we are loving and disallowing influences we are also the maintainers or the people who preserve the city okay we are those righteous people who are in the city uh, who are crying out to god day and night for his mercy and his work to be released upon our city so this is the responsibility that god has given us so in a word you in a in a way we can say that you know watchman is one picture but we're also like uh, the body of christ is like a shepherd isn't it because what does a shepherd do a shepherd also takes care of the sheep he is a uh, keen on protecting them from any harm um, you know any attacks when we pray we are doing the same thing we are protecting the city we are like watchmen we are also like uh, shepherds who are protecting the city and that is the responsibility which god has given us so we will look more deeply into how we are going to pray so there are several points actually in our notes today and i am hoping to touch on all of them and cover them so that we are equipped to pray for the city so praying for the city wide church how how can we do that most effective way now yesterday we said that as individuals we can pray god is looking for one man to stand in the gap and can that shift the balance it can and we have seen it we have seen it in in various revivals i think i gave the uh example of the welsh revival right where uh, evan roberts it was one person it started he uh, it started with him but yes eventually a lot of other people joined in and um, you know the the prayer 
movement started and then the outpouring of the holy spirit happened the revival took place and it also resulted in if you read the outcomes of the welsh revival you will be amazed okay because you see there that the crime rate came down the uh, the cussing right people used to cuss and use bad language those kind of it things changed so you read those results in the welsh revival and that is city transformation we are talking about touching the city isn't it so when people began to pray uh, and it began with one person initially uh, then again you know it went on to uh, covering a lot of other people brought a lot of other people into the work that god was doing however in general usually or normally it takes a city wide church to win a city wide war so one person can do it a few people can do it but it is better for uh, a large gathering of believers in the city you know when god looks at uh, the church in the city mm, he doesn't look at individual churches we we see in the book of revelation you know he addresses the church of uh, ephesus the church of so he looks at the city and he addresses the city wide church so the city wide church itself you know as a large uh, a body of believers when we rise up and when we pray together that is the most effective way of uh, taking the city through prayer so a city wide church is helpful in winning a city city wide war now the example which i gave you from that transformations uh, uh, documentary people came together from different churches and they prayed for their city and then they talk about the results that they saw so for us also you now we can encourage churches to come together churches to pray together and that makes a difference so what are some of the things that we can pray for we can pray for the spiritual leadership in the city so that is made up of you will have pastors you have ministers of god you have leaders christian leaders and also we can you know extend it and we can pray for the families of these people because they are the ones <coughs> who will lead the work of god in the city so what can we pray for these people you know we pray the things that uh, we pray over leaders we would pray for god's wisdom we would pray for uh, you know the anointing breaks the yoke so we can pray lord you increase the anointing upon their lives when we have more grace right we are able to do more for the kingdom so then we pray lord give more grace lord to all of these people uh, we can uh, pray for good health good strength we can pray for um, Uh, you know because <clears throat> serving the lord requires boldness we can pray for boldness upon the lives of these people and as they move forward boldly you know we can also ask god for his protection upon the lives of these spiritual leaders so are we praying for one pastor of you know some um, uh, you know peace church and then one pastor of uh, grace church no we are praying for all the pastors anybody who is in spiritual leadership over the city you know the bible says that it is god who appoints these shepherds okay leadership comes from god so we will uphold them we will pray over them we will bless them we will ask god to increase them and you know strengthen them so that is one thing we can do when we are praying for the city so pray for all the pastors <clears throat> all the ministers all the leaders no bias in that if god has chosen people in leadership let us uphold them let us pray for all the pastors all the leaders in the city because they have to be strong they have to be clear on how god is leading them then we can pray for the city wide church now everything that we discussed when we talked about praying for the believers praying for the brethren praying for the local church that can come here so we can pray and we can say lord you said you will build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail against so that means your church is a powerful church so let the body of believers in the city arise in the name of jesus okay so we pray for a strong church we pray for uh, you know strength in the church we pray for uh, the church to be touched by the work of the spirit so like a revival god's revival uh, god's work of the holy spirit upon the church we can pray that you know uh, the people will 
be discipled that uh, they they will be empowered by the word that they will have an influence over all the spheres of society so what are we saying you know first we prayed for god to strengthen the pastors and the leaders now we are praying for a strong city wide church imagine you know if the the church in the city is shining uh, all the people are taking their position and wherever god has called them they are making a difference it impacts the entire city so we pray for the believers we pray for the body of christ and we pray that lord let them make an impact let them be strong let them make an impact now there are some points which are listed here but additionally the holy spirit might impress you with other specific points so just feel free but you know i'm giving you some general points that we can begin with we can also pray that the church in the city be the temple of god you now what what is a temple a temple is defined by the god who lives in that temple so people say ah this is this god tem god's temple that god's temple but we know that we as the spiritual body of christ we are the temple of god paul says don't you know you are the temple and your body is a temple of god so that body is applicable in our physical body but we are also the family of god or the body of christ so as a body of christ we are the temple of god so when we call ourselves temple what defines a temple the god who lives in the temple the god must dwell in us that is what makes us a temple if god doesn't dwell how good is it for us to uh, be you know just a gathering or uh, a building but god is not there that doesn't help but we pray that god you fill the body of believers make us your temple be uh, be the be here in our midst to god and then you know we will reflect your glory because if god's presence is in the temple what what can we see we can see the glory of god with the presence of god comes the glory of god so in the city that's what we want we want god to be seen we want god's glory to be revealed and it is only revealed where god dwells so when we pray for the city when we pray for the city wide church when we pray for the churches in the city let us pray that and say god you come you dwell you reveal your glory in our midst and that will make an impact on our city okay then we can go ahead and we can pray that uh, there will be a manifestation of uh, god's glory in various ways how does god's glory manifest we see you know jesus the first time uh, he does a miracle in john chapter 2 when he turns water into wine we read he manifested his glory so the manifestation of god's glory is through signs wonders miracles healings deliverances uh, you know and the work of the spirit it can also be through you know you release a prophetic word a manifestation of the spirit because the gifts of the spirit are a manifestation of the spirit so in all these ways and also you know the goodness of god uh, some social action that we engage in but in the name of jesus you know not just for doing good works but in the name of jesus for the glory of jesus all these things manifest the glory of god so we can pray god in our city let the church arise you know let the body of believers be strong you know let them let them do the works of god let those works be seen these are the prayers that we pray for the the city wide church and one church being strong in all these ways it is helpful but when we are looking for a city wide impact we have to pray for the city wide church okay moving on we can also uh, confess and repent on behalf of the city okay god says right in second chronicles 7:14 if my people who are called by my name if they would humble themselves what is humble ourselves it's basically repentance it's going before god and acknowledging the wrong which we have done and we say okay god you know you pour out your presence on us uh, you know we turn from our wicked ways oh god so we repent we repent of our sins but here is the other thing you know we can also identify with the sins of the people and we can say that you know on their behalf like you cry on their behalf or you you uh, uh feel the burden of sin on their behalf so when i say god forgive me you know forgive me for this sin in my nation 
it may not mean that i have done that crime you know suppose i'm crying out to god and saying you know god all the all the murders that are going on all the child molestations that are going on lord i repent on behalf of my people you're a representative have you committed the sin no but this is the principle of identification where on behalf of the city we can cry we can repent we can confess okay we can uh, say sorry to god and that is a biblical principle actually like you can identify on behalf of the sinner and repent on behalf of the sinner okay that doesn't mean that the sinner does not have to do his own repenting but you understand what i mean in intercession you know uh, this is a the possibility we can pray uh, uh, by identifying the sins of the people so this is also a manner in which we can uh, engage in prayer now uh, it is possible that you know there are certain sins that have been committed in cities okay we read this in the bible where you had things like uh, the first born was was um, sacrificed which was not at all uh, something that pleased god you know evil things were done in cities uh, to to protect the city to bless the city mm. so there could be certain sins that were committed in the city and the holy spirit can lead us to repent on behalf of those sins now let's take for example if the sin of our city is corruption okay and uh, we as god's children we are praying against that we are saying god you know there shouldn't be hoarding of money there shouldn't be injustice by extortion of money and things like that uh we can also engage in act of repentance what are some of those acts of repentance now we might be the people who say you know like uh, zacchaeus when he came to know that i made a mistake i should not have taken money four times he gives back okay and that's his act of repentance so we can also we know that there is a, a a a demonic influence of corruption over our city so how do we go against it we are praying we are engaging in spiritual warfare but spiritual warfare can also be in action so if there's a lot of corruption i engage in uh, you know the the right way of handling money i am generous with my money okay so whatever is happening in the city through the demonic influences we go opposite to that if there's no honor let's say uh, just example i'm giving you let's say women are not being honored there's a lot of disrespect you know women are not being honored and that's the spiritual atmosphere of the city as a church when we uh, engage in acts of of repentance so there could be uh, things here it's mentioned as reconciliation ceremonies or it can just be an act where as a body of believers we respect women right so then you're going against the spiritual influence in that particular place okay so i was saying we engage in actions which are opposite to the wrong spiritual influence so they can also be let's say um some kind of uh, um i've heard this in fact one of the pastors in our pastors meetings shared that in his city there there was conflict among the communities they were not willing to talk they were not willing to see eye to eye so at that point it was a christian person who went uh, and uh, you know he mediated right he mediated and uh, he tried to bring in reconciliation and what are some ceremonies of reconciliation maybe we may want to um honor somebody who has been put down unjustly right so you engage in an act like that so when you say ceremonies it's basically like an act that you engage in where you are countering the evil that has been done so far or the evil um uh, you know that that uh, has remained in the culture till now so when we engage in an act like that that's also a, a spiritual warfare act where you're breaking what has happened till now you're changing it and there is a shift in the spiritual atmosphere so that reconciliation i remember that pastor saying that when he went in and you know he uh, together with some of the other christian brothers they went and they did this whole thing of apologizing sorry all that the reconciliation slowly came because what they did did not happen through anyone else till that time so these are all the ways in which we can change the spiritual atmosphere one is prayer 
um, you know, in a spiritual way, but also action. We can engage in certain actions which are opposite to the spiritual atmosphere, right? Uh, so let's say there's a lot of complaining, there's a lot of uh, accusation, uh, you know, bad language in our, in our culture, in the city. We go opposite. We speak blessing. We worship. We praise. You know, we do so things like that. You do an opposite action as led by the Spirit of God. And that also breaks the strongholds in the city. So in that way, we can pray for the city, confess and repent on behalf of the city. Then uh, we can pray for God's visitation. What is God's visitation? See, basically, we are saying, Holy Spirit, come. Okay, move upon us. We know the work of the Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who convicts us of sin, righteousness, and judgment. So we are saying, you come, Lord. You work in the hearts of the people. You bring them to a point of decision. And earlier, we talked about how the Father draws people to himself. So we say, God, you know, you draw the people to yourself. So we're asking for that sovereign work of God the work of the Spirit, the work of the Father. Uh, and, you know, we, we pray, Lord, bring these people to repentance. Help them, Lord, to awaken to the knowledge of God so that they can escape whatever the enemy is doing, the way he's corrupting the world, the way he's corrupting the lives of the people, that people can actually escape it and they can be saved. So, you know, we begin to pray these things. We begin to pray that the gospel we know that the gospel is the light okay, which shines uh, on the lives of the people. So we can pray, Lord, let your gospel penetrate. You bring that wisdom and revelation so that people can accept what you have done. They can understand the work of the cross. They can understand that Jesus is the son of God. So, you know, these are prayers we can pray over our city. We can also ask God to send forth laborers. You know, because uh, we will need many laborers. Even Jesus said that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So we can say God. And he said, pray to the God of the harvest. So our God is a God of the harvest. If we pray to him and say, God, you send laborers, then what can God do? God will send men and women, <laughs> excuse me, to touch the lives of the people uh, and uh, you know he can do it in in amazing ways so uh, we can do that right we can pray and we can ask god to send more people who are serving him who will share the gospel uh, and uh, do the work of god in the city we can also ask god for supernatural encounters we've talked about these things actually when we prayed for those who are lost uh, and we can say god you know let there be a release of angels let angels go and minister let's pray we can pray that god gives people dreams visions you know in supernatural ways uh, i'm sure you know many of you have heard um, that uh, in some of the cultures where they're not accepting of christ uh, a lot of people have testified uh, of having dreams, right? Having dreams, even in closed places where there's a lot of persecution and people are not able to enter to take the gospel. There are testimonies that have come in where people have just had dreams of Jesus and they've given their lives to Christ. So we can also pray and we can say, God, in supernatural ways, Lord, you minister to the people. Let them have divine visitations, you know, the way Paul on the road to Damascus, God encountered him and his life changed. So as we pray, you know, these things can take place. So we can begin to pray and ask God for a spiritual, um, for a mighty visitation. Now, I told us earlier that one thing is to pray. The other thing is to go against the works of the devil. So spiritual warfare, what are the things that we can focus on when it comes to spiritual warfare? in the city we can exercise our authority against demonic powers okay, we can exercise our authority against demonic powers how to do that you know some of the ways in which we can uh, declare uh, uh, exercise spiritual authority is one we can declare the power of the cross okay we can declare the value of what jesus has done on the cross this Satan never likes it. You know, the cross is one thing he hates. He does not want us to talk about the cross. He does not want us to reflect on the cross because it is a picture of victory over the devil. 
he doesn't like it so that is the first thing we can engage in we can declare the finished work of the cross you know the defeat of of the enemy we can declare the blessings that have come through the cross we can declare how we are saved right salvation was bought through the cross we are redeemed this is the reality what is on the basis of the cross so much has taken place so we can begin to declare the victory of the cross right and that is part of spiritual warfare over the city so engage in declaring the work the finished work of the cross uh, over the city and uh, we can declare that you know this is the victory and therefore the enemy is defeated then we can also very specifically identify the strongholds over the region okay this would come under spiritual mapping i don't know if we spoke about it earlier but in a simple sense spiritual mapping is um you look at a region you look at the spiritual uh, negative influences okay and basically you identify like for example in the city of ephesus there's a goddess diana okay uh, and uh, there was a lot of influence because of that that goddess over the city so that stronghold had to be broken similarly over cities there can be uh, you know some some de demonic strongholds there can be the worship of, of some god goddess or it can also be strongholds of uh, uh, you know the um uh, like injustice um alcoholism I, i think i touched on that earlier so things like that so when we pray and we do the mapping we can identify uh, over this region this is the spiritual stronghold uh, that there are a lot of people who are you know engaging in sexual immorality because there is a stronghold of you know uh, the spirit of lust something like that so when we identify those specific demonic influences we can engage in pulling down those strongholds right we come against them uh, the prevailing strongholds and we tear them down we proclaim how do we tear them down uh, basically we again you know one of the best ways is to submit to god so we we uh, exalt god we worship god we honor god we speak the truth of his word we speak what the cross has done we declare the power of the blood you know these are the things that we engage in and together with that you know we take authority we bind the works of the enemy over that land okay uh, uh, and uh, you know we we mm, with our declaration you know, we we declare things null and void in jesus name uh, we declare the presence of god over the city so as we are doing all these things we are binding we are casting out uh, it's really war that is going on and a transformation is coming through so we can identify these specifics specific strongholds and go against them and we can also uh, you know engage if there are let's say individuals okay who uh, are affected by these demonic influences uh, we can also pray over them and set them free so in many instances like in samaria if you see there was a sorcerer by the name of simon okay and that was the stronghold in the city so the moment uh, you know the message came to him philip preached and uh, the sorcerer gave his life to christ okay so things turned around so similarly like uh, later you see in paphos there was one other sorcerer uh, elimus he was not letting the word of god penetrate the heart of uh, one of the council uh, leaders but the moment paul addressed that the leader was able to see the gospel so these strongholds it could also be working through individuals and you know sometimes when we cast out these specific demonic spirits there was a demon spirit in a a girl uh, in um, where which city is uh, in the city of uh, philippi okay and she was she had a spirit of divination going around doing fortune telling and all but when uh, paul and barnabas like they cast out that uh, not paul and barnabas yeah no, no barnabas in this but uh, paul he cast out that that spirit what happens is um, that girl is set free okay and we read that there are people who saw what happened and there was like a freedom right which came from uh, casting out those specific spirits that were working through individuals so that is also a way of 
engaging uh, in spiritual warfare so we bring the freedom of god basically by breaking those strongholds by casting out those demons uh, and going against the enemy so engage in spiritual warfare so we pray for for god to work in the city and we also go against the enemy now we can pray for uh, other things that the scriptures teach us to do for the city we can also pray for the peace of the city okay uh, jeremiah 29:7 we have seen that god has called us to pray for peace in the city now for most of us um, you know we get upset that ah things are not going well leaders are not leading well but you see there is a spiritual authority which you and i can exercise over the city and instead of being those complainers uh, how about we exercise our positive spiritual authority by blessing the land and speaking peace over the land so we can pray for peace in the city uh, we can also pray uh, the bible calls us to pray for those who are in authority so we we may have uh, you know members of parliament members of legislative uh, assembly we have you know other uh, influential leaders uh, we have people in positions they handling different aspects uh, concerning the city what is the word of god tell us in first timothy 2 verses 3 and 4 we are called to pray for civil authority so instead of you know condemning them putting them down the responsibility of the church is we pray we pray that god you know you give them the wisdom you lead them you strengthen them lord you bless them right so when we pray what happens so we are committing them into god's hands and god can lead them with his divine influence and things can turn around so let us pray for our leaders that is something we can do for our city we can also pray for peace in the city so again you know we are taught uh, paul wrote to timothy first timothy 2 verses 1 through 3 there he says that we can ask uh, we can pray that let there be peace for our own peace we have to pray right so we pray for peace in the city there can be a lot of um, uh, rival communities living there and yet you know we can say god let your peace rule and reign in our city let your peace rule and reign in our community so that way uh, what we are saying is god remove any strife hatred rivalry you know uh, ill will uh, and all of those things father that may exist and in the place of those things lord father we release oh god for uh, we release your peace uh and you know we we uh maybe for this kind of a work to get done what we said earlier repentance also comes into the picture what if uh you know you are the community that has been harmed or uh, uh you are the community that has been hurt by others okay one of the things which is required is um uh the act of forgiveness so we can first release forgiveness we can first release those past hurts and say god we release these things you know we cannot change what has happened in the past but we know that you can bless you can bring peace uh, amidst you know xyz communities that live here so we want to be a channel of blessing so in that way we can begin to pray for peace among communities in a given place <clears throat> we can also pray for various causes and when we read the word of god you know there is god uh, upholds causes he upholds justice okay righteousness uh, and and uh, justice right that's what the the throne of god is based on so god is an upholder of the truth and justice so various causes are there depending on our city uh, and we can pick each one of them up and we can pray for them some are listed here so uh, your notes here says pray for the poor and homeless we know that you know god cares for them so uh, based on god's word we can pray for those who are in need they don't have homes uh, they don't have facilities so we can pray and we can also pray god cause the the uh, government to come up with policies or oh god to bless those who are poor uh, in our city so prayers like this we can pray so whatever god upholds we can pray for those things we could pray for um, uh, marriages 
in our city we could pray for families we could pray for uh, you know safety of homes we can pray for children okay that uh, uh, that they be influenced by good things and uh, the negative influences that the enemy is bringing through the internet through you know uh, all kinds of other channels that those things would be stopped in the name of jesus we can pray for young people obviously there'll be a lot of uh, universities and colleges in in most of the regions uh, and uh, the influence over their lives we can pray and we can say god awaken them to the truth of your word uh, let them not get sucked into uh, you know evil uh practices sins that are going to destroy their life but lord awaken them to righteousness awaken them to justice so we can pray for uh, things like that so children young people we can also pray for uh, safety in the city right god's protection we can pray for the crime rate to go down now we may want to be very specific about the crime rate remember we said in that state of uh, um kali city of kali there was drug trafficking murder you know those those were some of the crimes that people were dealing with so maybe god points us to some specific things that are going on and we want to cry out to god and say god these things are going on and we mm, speak a stop to that in the name of jesus so we can pray against the crimes that are taking place and ask them to cease uh, in jesus mighty name so just going back to uh, the welsh revival it's amazing you know sometimes when you read about these revivals uh, uh, one of the outcomes was the crime rate went down and it went down so steeply that it is said that the police didn't have any work every evening people would gather for these uh, spiritual meetings mm, held by evan roberts and the team so the whole city would be moving in the direction of the crusade or you know whatever you want to call it like that large gathering where it's taking place and the crime rate came down so much that the police were put as crowd control can you imagine uh, because th that was one of their primary jobs at that time they didn't have anything else to do like so is it possible for crime rate to go down it can go down okay we've seen that happen uh, in cities so that's something we can pray for then we can pray for bondages to be broken you now we see right people are addicted people are addicted to drugs sometimes we see people you know lying on the roads addicted to alcohol they're addicted to some other substance and it's so sad for us to see these things but as believers we know that these are the strongholds of the enemy he's working on the hearts of young people on the hearts of uh, you know um, others in in our city so we go against and we pray and we bind those uh, you know influences in jesus name uh, and we will see god's work released upon uh, them so we can pray that people be set free from bondages and that is god's heart we can pray for just some issues here okay but you know there are so many issues that uh, i can keep listing out you can make your own list for your city and pray so you could pray for elderly for their protection you could pray for um, uh, purity uh, to be established uh, you know there was one point i still remember this was early on this was when i was in college uh, that was the first time that in the newspapers there were certain pages you know which had like really uh, uh, you know wrong pictures and photographs till that time we would never get newspapers like that but it started you know uh, those kind of newspapers also started coming and uh, <clears throat> i remember at that time one pastor i had gone to church and he was asking us to pray and he said these things have to stop you know uh, certain influences isn't it so in that way or there could be some advertisements there can be stuff on the internet that goes on you know trying to uh, get people hooked to um, sexual impurity so these things we can pray and we can say god you know we we want to see reverence and purity in our land oh god we we take authority over what satan is trying to do in the name of jesus so you know things like that and i remember praying and after some time actually those papers uh, did they stop or they became less popular something happened but uh, i remember that there was a call for prayer just for that so we can pray if there's any wrong influence over the 
city then uh, there are issues of corruption injustice oppression you know, bonded laborers in our times you'll be amazed to see uh, uh, you, uh, that there are still bonded laborers right uh, there is uh, casteism so many things <laughs> so uh, all of these things exist around us and we are god's people here what about dignity of women okay crimes against women every day you hear news crimes against small children right uh, abuses uh, so just so many things that happen in the city that, that is displeasing to god so pull out all those things and pray right for god to intervene in those situations uh, and also we can engage in there's a last section here which says engage in ground level spiritual warfare ground level spiritual warfare is what i already told us to exercise the power of god through our lives so when i'm exercising the power of god through my life i release people from bondage the way peter he uh, uh, ministered to simon the sorcerer paul right he ministered to that uh, um, like he uh, went against elimus the the sorcerer so you know basically if you come across something where you have to release the power of god you have to cast out a spirit you have to bind the spirit that's called as ground level spiritual warfare so we engage in things like that uh, and uh, we are able to see a freedom in our city so these are all the points uh, that i wanted to touch on today i know it's a lot but it'll be good if you can just go back and review the notes one more time and that will really help us uh, but i'm just leaving this time open any thoughts any questions anything you're wondering about let's see if i can answer so feel free you can just Uh, you know unmute yourself and ask ha huh. yes yes divya yeah thank you pastor uh, so my question sure. is regarding uh um like sometimes we just as maybe we set up our time for praying for the city uh, mm -hmm. or uh, may may not be in a large group or so but uh, these are since these are you know very um, it touches on topics that are very general uh so sometimes we cannot see results right mm -hmm. uh, so how uh, can we keep ourselves motivated to you know continue praying mm -hmm. yeah so uh, i didn't mention it uh, the way it's there in our notes here um it where uh, that statement comes right where it says for a city wide city transformation we need a city wide church uh, to engage in prayer but it also says there that, that sometimes for city transformation for us to see the changes it might take months and years okay so what i would say is i would say that we have to pray and ask god for a burden so this motivation um, may not be based on uh, seeing you know immediate results so we really need a burden from god where you know we are we are taken by god to pray for the city uh, for a prolonged period of time and in a practical sense yes you can just look and see if there is any change uh, but in certain matters no you know we never know we we might pray through our lifetime and then the change might happen like i have heard you know i'm little interested in this whole thing about uh, that civil rights movement and martin luther uh, king junior and you know the people how they uh, how they uh, fought against injustice so there there were there are stories of you know mothers and grandmothers who prayed uh, through their lifetime and nothing happened but it's only later right that at a certain time there was a transformation it was like a wave it came against injustice so these matters of city transformation uh, it, it's kind of hard to keep yourself motivated actually yeah but you yeah. can look for some small changes here and there yeah yeah and rejoice in that <laughs> right right thank you thank you for listening yeah sure 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 
yeah but a good one so i'm sharing uh, a link uh this was preached in church a while ago apc i've shared the link 2012 this is uh, about city transformation so just for us to get a like a good idea of what we are talking about you know you can also spend time listening to these sermons um and uh, yeah god is a god of cities and we want to see you know cities why uh, touch the entire city because we are talking about hundreds and thousands and millions of souls coming at this coming to god at the same time so it is that powerful uh, so while we are engaging in our regular way of ministering how do we touch the the city at large right these are questions and as you uh, you know try, look at all this th there's this thing about seven mountains how can you influence we are influencers how can we influence seven mountains spiritual warfare for for city transformation now how do we engage in things like that mm, so yeah there's so much more uh, that we can actually uh, look at so do think about it if you have uh, any questions any any other questions as of now okay so uh, feel free to post it on the stream page uh, i could also answer them over there for us okay so yep so thank you thank you everyone for connecting today we will uh, uh, wrap up today's class we'll close with a word of prayer and i would like to request someone so who's going to close today okay <laughs> i i thought as much yes it can no please go ahead yeah father we come to the throne of grace lord thank you as we have learned today how to pray for our city lord we keep in your hands lord all the cities from where we are from lord we want to pray from the different nations lord different places lord we give all the places and all our people in your hands lord every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess that christ jesus is the lord Lord, thank you for the prayer. Lord, thank you for all the time we have spent in prayer and session. Lord, the day we have spent in your presence. Lord, the learning about your word and Lord, learning about the praying. Lord, thank you for this hour. Lord, thank you for all the students who have joined us and thank you for all the for the ma'am. Lord, who has taught us about the praying. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sitkenud, and thank you, everybody. God bless you all. Have a um, yeah a blessed weekend good uh, a time of worship with your local church be refreshed we'll meet again next week take care bye yeah thank you thank you bye for now thank you